What is going on, MBL Network? It's the Commissioner Corner Podcast, episode number 20, Thursday, July 13th, MBL season 25. We're currently in week eight. Uh, we got, I'm going to have a great show tonight. Uh, I'm your host, Bomber, joined alongside my co-host and co-commissioner of the Madden Bomber League, Lip. Uh, we'll also have OSU here as a special guest, and then a, a couple sideline reporters coming on and giving us some information. We're talking Alan James, quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals, Jaguars halfback sensation, Deion Neblett and his journey, how he got to Jacksonville, uh, along with the Seattle Seahawks, uh, contender or pretender, big topics coming up, and episode two of our three and out game show, which we ask questions about Madden, NFL, and the Madden Bomber League, and we're going to have OSU on as the uh, second participant in that, and we'll be getting to that at the end of the show. Uh, but first, we're going to be talking this partnership. Uh, we got a little video we're about to play right now, and we're going to have the network director, Nick, Nick Mazesco, also known as OSU, come on here and talk about uh, the partnership we just uh, just established. Yeah, that's right, folks. We are now a part of the TGN Army. We're happy to announce a partnership between the MBL Network and the Gamers Network. Uh, we're really excited about this. Uh, this is a partnership that just sort of came together in the last week or so. Um, and we're really excited about it, mostly because this is an opportunity for not only our channel to grow a little more, um, TGN uh, and their parent company, BBTV, provide a, a ton of great uh things that we can use, uh, different avenues that we can explore for collaborations, different tools we get to use on our channel. Um, so that can help us grow, but at the same time, it's also an opportunity for us as a member of not only the CFM community, but the Madden community as a whole to uh, expand our reach and show more people what we what we do, what the CFM movement is all about, what the Madden Bomber League is all about, and what uh, the great programming here on the MBL Network is all about. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, uh, TGN Army. We're going to be a part of that now. Obviously, some big things. And before we let uh, you go, and you're going to come back on for our three and out game show episode, you're going to be a participant tonight. So good luck in that. Uh, but before we let you uh, get out of here, uh, we also have an NBL Live coming up, I believe, on Sunday. Uh, you want to give us some information about that game? No. <laughs> just, is that not the right answer? Did I not well, that's, that's, right? that's not the greatest way to start here. I mean, this is a this is a delayed podcast by at least two hours. We got to give the give the people what they want. So we have yep. an NBA Live play by play broadcast this Sunday. I'm not sure on the time. I know we got confirmation on the time. It's slipping my mind right now. So I you would you know, you, you know off the top is it two o'clock? Yeah, so we're going at 2 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday afternoon, doing a little mid-afternoon broadcast on the weekend. Uh, we got some Week 9 action. It's going to be the Dallas Cowboys and the Jacksonville Jaguars, two of the big, uh, I don't want to say surprises, but uh, the Cowboys have been in around the top of the league uh, in many seasons past. They were down last season, a lot of ownership turmoil in Dallas, but uh, they were at one loss uh, up until this week where they tied. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars also at one loss. Uh, these are two teams that were in the top three of Nate Silver's power rankings and we get a matchup in week nine between um two teams looking to sort of establish themselves as a power in the nbl and sort of make believers out of everybody out there so again two o'clock eastern time little mid-afternoon stream on sunday uh, you're not going to want to miss it should be a good time and broadcast number i think we're at 107 now i think 107 i was thinking Correct. 107 too yeah wow 107 all right, so broadcast number 107 Sunday on this channel, the NBL Network. Make sure you hit that like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the game. Dallas Cowboys versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Jaguars are 6-1. and one. Cowboys currently 5-1-1. One and one. They just tied with the NBL Season 24 Super Bowl champion Washington Redskins. That was the game of the week. It went 23-23. to Ended in a tie. Both teams uh, came out and really battled. And it's going to be interesting to see where that uh, NFC East falls because uh, the Cowboys obviously have won it. I mean, the Redskins have won it. Uh, two times in a row, the last two seasons, 23 and 24. Cowboys looking to rega regain some glory in the NFC East. What do you guys think in the chat? Uh, Cowboys or Redskins? Let us know as we uh, move along in the show. OSU, thanks for coming on. Thanks for talking about our new partnership. We're really excited. And if you guys have any questions about the partnership, what it means to MBL, uh, how it can affect MBL, how it can help us grow, feel free to shoot this guy a DM and, and, and talk with him. Uh, he'll also talk in the main chat, and we'll, and we'll give you guys all the information that we have. Uh, so we can keep this transparent and keep this positive moving forward. Uh, OSU is going to drop out right now. We'll see him on the flip side at the end of our program when we're doing our three and out game show. And before we get into our topics right now, Lip, uh, how excited are you about this partnership? I'm excited. There's a lot of good resources that uh, 
can be used in this and there's such a good community building thing here i'm really excited not only for our network but for our league and the madden community uh another step in the right direction a lot of exciting stuff about to happen yeah i've seen a lot of things in the chat redskins a lot of people picking the redskins lip uh quick thoughts on that redskins cowboys nfc east it's not a topic of the show right now it organically came up a big game for the uh, dallas cowboys on sunday 2 p.m eastern standard time broadcast number 107 uh, both teams have tough schedules, man, and, and, and then now they're tying each other, and I know that the Cowboys beat them early in the year. Uh, it's going to be very interesting down the stretch. Yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, I think that the Cowboys will get a big win on Sunday. I don't think the Jags will be able to, to keep up with them, but that tie with the Redskins is such an interesting thing because those teams are such so evenly matched. I think the Redskins will hold on to the division, have another good year, but the Cowboys will be right behind them. They'll be locked into uh, the number five wild card. So look for both of those teams to make a run in the playoffs, possibly meet up again in the playoffs. And if the, if the Redskins do get in the playoffs, which we all expect them to this year and win the division, of course, but... Even if they make the wild card, it'll be the first playoff appearance this cycle for Jameis Winston, their, their current starting quarterback. It'll be interesting to see how he plays under the big lights with so many expectations because they're thinking back-to-back -back in Washington. We're going to move on, though. We're going to talk another quarterback. He plays for a team that just pulled off a pretty big upset. In my mind, I think it was an upset. Uh, they went on the road. They went against Oakland, and they, they pulled off a pretty convincing victory against the Oakland Raiders just minutes ago. And, and, and I'm talking about the Arizona Cardinals quarterback, Alan James, the up-and-down play from a guy that arguably is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the NBL. Top five on paper to me, talent-wise. Production, that's a whole other story. I got him in the bottom 15 lip. But what's going on with Alan James? Is this an issue that can be resolved in this final season as the Arizona Cardinals move to 3-4 and four right now? I'm not sure. With that with that big win there, it's, it's, it's strange because uh, the Cardinals have the bottom-ranked offense 14 points a game 32nd in the league and they were going up against a pretty good defense in the in the oakland raiders 11 points allowed that's first passing defense is first and rushing is in the top 10 so that's a tough team to go in there and get a win against um but somehow they figured it out uh alan james is playing not great football and the thing that stands out to me horrible. the most Hor horrible football let's is... not let's not sugarcoat it not great i mean that's nothing great about how he's playing. I mean, I wouldn't even use no. great at all. I mean, he's he's not not even playing average, uh, just middle of the pack football. I think he's 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 performing at the, the bottom. What do you say? The bottom ten right now? Five Ugh. touchdowns, fifteen picks. Uh, bottom bottom five. Maybe. Bottom five. So that, great. Ten, not not the word we're going to use. Some room. Let's re uh, let's re uh, restate what, what we're saying with that because we talked about this off the show. It's pretty pitiful and, 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 and poor, and it, it ain't the off. The offense has changed to go around. They brought in a veteran, Julio Jones. They have a great young wide receiver, in, uh, Javari Downs. I mean, what's the problem? The thing that, the thing that stood out to me at first, the reason why this, was, this became a topic, was the touchdown to interceptions. At the time, before this last game, uh, five touchdowns and 16 interceptions. That's just not going to get it done. But the big thing is he has completed 50% of his passes in two games, 54% in another game, and just barely creeping over 60 in the other ones. I just don't think he's taking what the defense is giving. He's trying for the big play. There's so much pressure on him. He's got Julio, all that pressure, and he's just trying to go too far down the field, not taking the short stuff. That completion percentage needs to come up, play a little safer football, and they'll be able to get back on track. And before we move on from Alan James, I want to I want to throw out some of my comments because I was so big on this guy. I, I fall in love with the quarterbacks from LSU. I don't know if it's the color scheme, the purple and, and gold. I, I, I just like the colors, and I, I see the players, and the uniforms are sweet, and I see them dominating. Top five pick, NBL season 21. Rightfully so, right? Well, I mean, we both agreed at that time that this guy is a quarterback that deserves to be arguably was the best of the class. Okay. And, and the, the thing is, he's he's a big dude, 6'6", 225. That's Proto a big quarterback. Prototypical quarterback. That's the guy with, you want. Yep. With 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 an hit with the history of of being able to sling the ball down the field. I mean, this wasn't a guy that just had the size. This is not a out of Blake Bortles, you know, a guy that had obvious flaws. Uh, in his mechanics. This is a guy that had all the tools, and it's just between the ears that you seem to really see Alan James lacking. 6'6", 225, LSU. Uh, drafted NBL Season 21. Uh, was the fourth overall selection. Uh, he posted QBRs. Let me read off this QBRs real quick, Lip. As a rookie, 74.9 QBR. 
Second year in the league, 79.2. Okay, he increased. Season three, 83.5. Okay, he's. it seems like we're going in the right direction here, right? He still hasn't broke, and this is three years in the league, he hasn't hit 20 touchdowns yet, but he hit 19. Then a regression, NBL season 24. He only had 15 touchdowns and 33 picks. He hit a career high in interceptions. At 33 interceptions, his QBR dropped to a career low 71.8. This season, five touchdowns. It, the graphic says 15 interceptions. It's actually wrong. It's it's 16 interceptions. So the QBR is actually 62.7. Uh, so that's career lows. Everything oh. is career low. And he's on pace to have career low touchdowns, career high interceptions, and a career low QBR. I mean, I'm already it's it's a done label for me. Done deal. This is the last time you're gonna hear us talk about Alan James. This is the last season of this cycle of Madden. Uh Alan James 100 percent a bust and and I mean, I'm asking you, Lip. I think he's the obviously the worst quarterback. Uh, he has n the worst quarterback drafted top five in NBL Madden 17 cycle, not history, because there's a quarterback from Dallas <laughs> which will <laughs> which went number one overall, which I think was arguably yeah, oh, he's, not even arguably, he's probably definitely. In. Yeah, yeah. He's, do you remember he's the name in. of that guy? A little a little trivia for you. Oh. I do not. Nobody know, can't remember that name. Huh? I know exactly who you're talking about. Somebody in the chat help us out here if you can remember the name. The Dallas Cowboy quarterback owner was bots at the time, Madden yep. 16. Yep. Uh, really would like to get that name out. Appreciate everybody watching right now. Hit that like button. We got 25 people watching, 18 likes. The math don't add up, as they say. Uh, yes, yeah, so definitely a bust for Alan James. Alan James is a certified bust. Moving on right now, we're going to talk about Jaguars halfback Dion Neblet. And I this just thought out this today that <laughs> we had him on the practice squad in Detroit. You know, I don't know how short of a time it was. It was a guy we were looking at, but we've been so we were happy and with our starting uh, halfback Bubba Dylan. Uh, we had Jeremy Hill for contractual reasons. We couldn't, we didn't want to move on from him at the time. He was definitely we we felt confident with him as a backup because of his ball security and, and, and what we were paying him. It just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the right time to move on. So. He was on our practice squad, but not really looked at to really make the team. He was picked up by the Pittsburgh Steelers, played a season that actually started uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, if I'm correct. Then the Jaguars had, did a real little little uh, funny move this offseason. They took the MVP, uh, which was uh, Von Reed, the guy they drafted, and they decided, you know what, we're going to move on from Von Reed, and we're going to bring in this guy, Dion Neblet, and the, and the fans were upset. Do you, you remember those emails? Do you remember yeah, those uh the there comments? was a there was a lot and and the, the thing that really fueled that was he went on over to Indianapolis played started playing for the Colts so that fueled that fire even more and, and you see that a lot I mean that's 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 vengeful <laughs> you know signing uh, right there that's some hey, sure. hey this is a team and and the Colts went through a similar thing with with a rookie they had uh, a halfback they had over there for for quite some time oh, I, I, the names I'm slipping on the name right now uh, I. Hi, right, it's at the tip of my tongue. I, I I can't think of it. So we're gonna move on. But he he went and signed with the, with the Colts, who had an opening at, at half pack. He's a three down back. They're using him. And, and what what's he doing right now? What's Von Reed doing? Let me pull up some statistics on Von Reed. Put this in perspective. This was the MVP for NBL season 24 from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Von Reed. He's averaging only 3.6 yards per carry. And through six games, he has one touchdown. One touchdown. How smart do they look right now? Uh. That looks like the move that, that is going to lead them to the playoffs. I mean, you look at this guy. Neblet is just playing unbelievable football. In the last two years that he's played, he only got to 700 yards and 600 yards in almost a whole season. Five and six touchdowns. This year, through seven games, he's already at 852 yards and seven touchdowns. And only 11 less attempts in those previous two years. So... Whatever they're doing in Jacksonville is absolutely on the money, and that move to let Vaughn Reed walk is absolute gold, and it's, it's going to carry them through the playoffs. Yeah, and I, I keep hearing a lot of fans saying, you know, well, it's a system. And I think I've had one of our media personalities, Sonny Ooh. Weaver, said it's a system <laughs> It's a system play there. But I, I'm going to argue that it's not with, with Nebla in the sense that, okay, it might have been with Vaughn Reed. He was 5.1 yards per carry, 5.4 yards per carry. That's season 23 and season 24. He's 3.6 with the Colts. Okay, so yeah, okay, he was better in this system. But Neblet's at 6.9 yards per carry, and he's already had 124 attempts. 6.9 yards per carry, and we saw what he did on NBL Live against the Oakland Raiders. This guy, 
is he, he's on pace to break the record. It says in the graphic right there, he's on pace yeah. for 1,000. Listen to this slip. 1,947 <laughs> yards. Wow. Are you kidding me? Well, when Are you look you when you me? look at this, his first game with Jacksonville, 198 yards. He's had four games over 100 yards, but they're not just 108 yards, 110 yards or so. 198, 159, 159, 125. And the other three games that aren't 100 yards games, uh, he's got a 98, an 81, and a 32. The, he's just running out of his mind right now. Beast. So they're gonna have they. It might, this might be the first back-to-back -back team MVP, Ooh, same like position, that. different player. I mean, this yeah. is a very weird scenario. But, you know, I, I'm really giving a lot of uh, praise to that offensive line. Uh, the offensive line coach in Jacksonville is going to get a job somewhere. Uh, you know, that that's going to happen. The offensive coordinator, the ground and pound. I mean, these are all guys you're going to see as, as head coaches at some point from the success they're having. I mean, this is a team averaging 131 yards per game running the ball first in the league by by miles what are they doing so well i don't know i watch them and i say well you know i've seen that it's just <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, i've seen that ran in chicago i've seen that ran in washington but i haven't seen the results that they're getting i'm very impressed and uh, at the same time i'm you know it's it's a copycat league that's what football is all about that's what the nbl is about you know, you find things that work with that team. Then they try to, yeah, I don't know if this team is just really good running. And I think it's the personnel they have at the offensive line. Yeah, I, I think that. And they, they really practice patience. They really teach it. And the offensive line is a smart group. They, they really know how to get out there, attack defenders, and let the running back read what's going on and, and go for it. Also, Indy, or, uh, I'm sorry, Jacksonville's given them the ball quite a bit. Each game, he's been over... Uh, 15 yards yeah. per carry. Well, let's it's let's let's game. talk that real quick. Let's give a little little put a little context behind it. Uh, they've passed the ball 144 times. Neblet has ran 824 times. Their quarterback has taken 12 knees. Sylvester Poole has ran the ball seven times. Victor Reese five times. Lawson three times. They've ran the ball as much as they've passed it. This is a this is one of the purest balanced attacks I've ever seen. I've seen balanced attacks because they want to keep the defense honest, but this is a literally a balanced attack because both attacks are just so, I mean, I, it's hard to describe it. They're just so electric. In, you can get a big play passing just as easy as you can get it running with this team. It really keeps the defense off guard, and that's what really allows this team to be so dominant, and, and that's why their record is high right now. I mean, it's 6-1. and one. Where do you see these guys ending up at? Oh, they're they're going to win the division. Uh, it's very possible that they they lock down uh, a one or two seed, and from there, they can really go. To, I, I can see them making it to the AFC Championship. The toughest thing is going to be against the Chiefs. How many wins? How many wins in the regular season? Probably. Let's get out the play. Let's not get to the playoff shit. All Where right. Because I'm looking at their schedule right now. I don't think you've looked at this schedule because this back end schedule is scary. If I'm looking scary. at the schedule. I'm I'm. Huh. It's not easy. It's not I, easy. I, I see Cowboys, Giants, maybe Titans if he gets if he gets going. I don't Red know. Redskins? Red Titans skins. twice. So Titans, let's say Titans, Titans split twice. Them. That'll split. That'll split. Okay, they'll split. Okay, Redskins, I think, is a loss for them. I think Cowboys will beat them. Bengals could beat them. We'll say no. But, I mean, between the Bengals and the Texans, I see one of them walking away with the win. That's another one. So that's one, two, three, four losses, right? And then Giants, that'd be five. That that put them at eleven and five. Yeah, think... they win the division at eleven and five. They'll they'll win the division. They'll win the division. All right, we're gonna leave it at that. We'll 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 put this we'll put this away right now. And our next show, we'll talk about more playoff stuff. But I, I say winning division. What do y'all guys think? Win the division for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Yes or no in the chat? And if you put no, tell me why. Don't say no just to say no. Tell me who's going to win that division. <laughs> If you say no, because I, you know, I hate the out. I mean, you're gonna play the field. There's three other teams in there. The Texans are a good team, but I, I've, I've said aged team. How long have I been saying that, Lip? That the Texans are aged, and you can see it now. They were. It was a one-two-three tie. I had Texans taking the the three-way tie two seasons ago, NBL season 23, when they finished 14 and two, I think. And uh, the next season, I said, man, they're looking a little older, you know. And it was a true tie. Then I didn't know who come up. The Titans ended up taking it. 
Now I see Jaguars ahead of the Titans, but the Titans significantly ahead of the Texans. Uh, but the Texans still could beat you any given Sunday. I just don't see... Uh, I mean, how, how do I put it? The Texans are old. And they gave a lot of contracts to older guys, and they sold out for that one season. They went 14-2, and two, and now they're in a situation where their fan base is crying. I see it on, on social media all the time. You know, they want something done. They want something done, but they don't understand they have no money. They can't make moves because they are cap-struck. This is a team that has spent so much money on bringing older players in. They brought in Nick, Nick Beekman from Detroit. His play has slowed down significantly. Still a productive guy, but we've watched him get beat over the top. Clowney's uh, getting older. Uh, Lip, I just don't see anything happening with Houston. Final words on Houston before we switch topics. As Nick Mazesco says, Jags get in. I completely agree with that. Uh, but go ahead. What do you think? Texans, yay or nay? Wild card maybe? No? They're already 2-5. and five. I'm going to say no. Uh, they're 2-5. and five. The thing is, they've always had an offense that can that can go with anybody. But the thing is, they always had a defense that could slow down another really good offense, yep. and that has completely gone. JJ but they lost Watt JJ. Left. They lost JJ. JJ Watt left. Watt. Clowney's getting older. They fell apart. But another thing on their offense is the is the slow decline of DeAndre Hopkins. Yep. Long time ago, 1,300 yard receiver. Then two seasons at 900, two seasons at 700, and now he's off the depth chart. Where is he at on the depth chart? He's at, at five or six, coming in for a play or two, a game maybe. Uh, only 10 receptions, 98 yards so far in the season. He is out of that offense, and they are two and five. And I, I completely messed up this. We actually sent Z-Star down to Jacksonville to talk to the uh, <laughs> Jacksonville Jaguars. And, man, we almost ate that budget right there. Uh, we sent him down there. It wasn't first class. He, he flew a little coach, uh, and he got to talk to the coach. And he talked to the owner. And he talked to Neblet. Uh Star, are you there with us? We got him on the line, Jack. Yeah, I'm here, Bomber. What's going on, guys? How are we doing? All right, tonight? man. So you went to Jacksonville. Where they? Where did they? Where they? Where? Where? Where, where did we set you up at? Where'd you stay at? Give us, give the audience a little idea where you stayed at tonight. Man, I was walking distance from the facility, so it was really easy to get there and talk to these guys. And they they accommodated you nicely. Uh, you spoke with the the coach, coaching staff, owner. Absolutely, it was a great time there. Okay, so uh, you spoke with the with this team. Uh, well, first, who do well, let's let's talk about the, the owner. What is his what is his thoughts on uh on Dion Neblet so far and, and and the feedback he got? I mean, they were getting blasted. Me and Lip, we we debated on our draft show bringing this up. The fact that they let uh, the the reigning MVP Von Reed walk, and now he's with Indianapolis, and he's pissed. And uh, you know they kind of weathered that storm, and they just brought an old Dion Neblet, the guy that was known for fumbling. Uh, in Pittsburgh, uh, and and now it's working out for him. So how how happy are they with this uh, with this Dion Neblet kid? I mean, ecstatic doesn't even explain it because these guys were all in on drafting a running back, but the two guys they were interested in fell off early, and they didn't have the money to go and get anybody in free agency. That's ultimately why Von Reed Von Reed ended up walking. Okay, so, so, okay, so. to see a guy come in that's relatively unknown, hasn't done much in the NBL. To play like this, I mean, these guys, they're raving about him. Okay, so they're happy with him. And, and what about Neblet? Did you get a chance to ask Neblet about this on pace? I mean, I'm looking at his, his uh, the, the stat sheet right now. He's on pace for 1,947 yards. And, and I know he's averaging 6.9 yards per carry. It would be tough to say. I mean, I just look at the 2,000 and I think, man, that'd be pretty crazy. Uh, so if you picked up the pace just a little bit, add another 53 yards, you're looking at 2K. Uh, is this is this something that's uh, that's on his mind? Is he thinking about this? Is this potentially going to happen? Yeah, it's in his mind for sure. But what he said and what he stressed was that he doesn't really care for any personal accolades or anything like that. His main priority is bringing home a trophy to the fans of Jacksonville. And it, it shows. I mean, talking to the owner, he's the first guy at the facility and the last and what was big for him was like we said earlier he's relatively unknown and the organization gave him the confidence continued to feed him the ball you guys alluded to it earlier he's towards the top of the league in touches for a guy that's relatively unproven for them to kind of instill that confidence and continue to give him the ball that went a long way for him well, we appreciate you going out there. Neblet's making $1.18 million this year. I hopefully, hopefully he has some incentives based into that contract because, man, he is, might be the most underpaid NBL player in NBL history, Lip. Um, 
one more thing before you go. You talked to the coaching staff. Did they say anything? Were they? I mean, were they concerned about this Allen Robinson injury? What was it? What was their position on that? And uh, is this going to mean more Dion Neblet carries? More Dion Neblet carries for sure. They said they're going to continue to ride the beast. They've always had a very strong rush attack. They believe in their system. Their defenses forces turnovers when they need to. So I mean, I would I would look for him to keep on going, man. He's I don't think he's going to slow down anytime soon. All right, we're going to send you on a couple more uh, projects th before the end of this uh, cycle. Uh, Lip, I mean, that's some good stuff, man. We've already pretty much talked about this, uh, you know, before you before you jumped on here, before you got on the call. So I uh, appreciate you coming on, Z-Star. We're going to we're gonna send around. Guys, in the chat, where do you want Z-Star to go next? You tell us where to go. Don't, don't plan it too far, man. I, you know, we can only afford so much for this show. Ticket prices and airline ticket prices are, are going through the roof. So tell us which team he should visit next and why, and we'll consider it for the next episode. And we'll get Z-Star back on here to do some road reporting for us. Thank you, Z-Star, for joining for us. Joining us Somewhere warm. I don't do well in the cold, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Z-Star, our, our road. Uh, what are we calling him, Lip? What are we going to call it? Put you on the man, spot. Make up Z, something cool. roaming gnome? I like it. it. Kind of almost rhymes a little bit, but doesn't. Uh, yep. That's right. A little Romy gnome, guys. T tell us where you want to send Z Star with hashtag. Well, no, no hashtag. Just tell us where you want to send them. We All need right, a graphic on. for that. Web3cast.com is our graphic sponsor. You get affordable yeah. graphic design. What? What are you? Are you trying to interrupt the Web3cast? Uh, no, I said we need here? a graphic for a Romy gnome Z Star, and we go right into web 3 k Oh, so 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 it ah. makes sense there. Web3cast.com, affordable pricing for all your creative needs. You can find them on Twitter at all business, or you can go to Web3cast.com. You need an overlay for your for your show. You need any kind of graphics for your website, uh, maybe for your team Twitters. You go to Web3cast.com. Let them know the Madden Bomber League sent you, and he'll give you a really sweet deal. As I said before, it's affordable pricing for all your creative needs. And we're moving on to a team that got me scratching my head all season long. And even after this week, uh, just a horrific loss. I couldn't believe it. A pick six ended up changing the outcome of that game. The Seattle Seahawks owned by Playa. Uh, contender or pretender is the subject. But, man, this team has beat some teams. This guy walks away with a victory versus the Chiefs in week seven. In week eight, he comes out, and he's taking on the Niners. That's an easy win, right? Not today. Niners <laughs> at home. Tough division game. They take the loss. 27-14. to 14. Seattle loses. So everything we think we know about the Seahawks, throw it out the window. We don't know nothing. They're 4-4, four 500, but they have some pretty impressive wins. As you can see on that sweet graphic there, uh, shout out to Kyle uh, for the graphics for this show. Uh, key wins against the New Orleans Saints and Kansas City Chiefs. And I don't know how impressive the New Orleans Saints are because they drop games to to people all the time and they leave us scratching our head. But big <laughs> win against Kansas City Chiefs. Did not see that coming. They've lost to the Vikings, Panthers, and the 49ers now. What's going on with uh, with Seattle? This, Whenever I saw this score, I thought, I thought wow, he's putting it together. You know, Bill Holmes comes in and it's changing the team. But when you look at the stats, it just... I don't want I, well, I'm in a tough spot Holmes only had 56 passing yards and the Seattle defense allowed 357 to Trey McIntyre and, and that is just unacceptable that that is not going to give them the, the the boost that they need but there is a very bright side the back end of their schedule is very favorable to them for a four and four team so there is hope and the division's not too competitive. They can definitely take this right now. They've got the Rams next week and then a bye. That bye week, they figure some stuff out. They can make a run here. Arguably, uh, they have potentially the – like the be okay, I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but listen. <laughs> <laughs> These, this wide receiver core is unique. I was going to say arguably a top three dynamic duo at wide receiver, but I, the production is still very young. But I like Delon's Virgil and I like Jamal Mason. I think they're, you know, underrated. Mason went to Louisville. Uh, Virgil obviously went to Ohio State. Was a big time player at, for Ohio State, and I think he's coming into his groove. Uh, Jamal Mason, you know, he's battled injury last year. He only had 475 yards, but when he was healthy, his last year that he was healthy was season 23, 70 catches. Over 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. I mean, this guy's the real deal, and we all know what DeLon's Virgil did as a rookie. Uh, he, I think he sat out for a uh, player suspension at the beginning of this season. He had 83 catches, 1,462 yards last year, and 12 touchdowns. This was a guy 
that can get it done. First round pick, top five pick in NBL season 24 rookie draft. Let me let us know. What do you think? You think this is a top five dynamic duo in the in the NBA and by um, in the NBA in the NBL? And by that standard, I'm saying, you know, when we think of dynamic duos, we think of the top two wide receivers on your team. It could be wide receiver, tight end. I, that doesn't matter to me. And we think dominance that you can't you, you you can't sleep on. You can't just throw your best corner on one and the other one just gets shut down by a number two. It's it's legit teams that have two wide receivers, and and you see it. I mean, you know. Obviously, you look at Detroit. They have Whistler Ridgeway and, and Gilbert DeGear. Then you see Pittsburgh Steelers with Martavius Bryant, Caleb Hayden. If he stays healthy, uh, you know, those are two examples I can give you right there. Uh, teams that have that ability it, are, are, is the next tier. Is that Seattle? That, that's what I want to ask. What do you think, Lip? I think it's I think it's there. Uh they're just young and it's only Virgil's second season. Um, but another, you know, great duo would be Kendall Hunnan and I, I can't believe I'm saying it. Devin Funches from oh, wait, are we Cincinnati. plugging the Cincinnati Bengals? I'm just saying dynamic duos. They're both 20 receptions over 400 yards. They're both playing very good football. Uh, that's a team that can, can pass the ball and, and Kendall Bryan's doing good. But uh, like I said, with the Seahawks, Virgil's just young. Give him some time. You know, he had that big rookie season. season. Uh, teams have some tape on him now. Kind of seeing that play out. Let him break through a little bit, and then we can talk about it. I know New Orleans fans are probably saying, well, what about the $20 million man Tyler Lockett and uh, Brandon Cooks? Not on production. Definitely hasn't happened. But, um, you know, they expect a lot of big things out of them. It didn't really happen. So so putting together two wide receivers that can pair up and, and, and really raise some havoc on the offensive side of the ball – is definitely something that teams look to do. I mean, you got a guy like uh, Rashad Rankin uh, with the Giants and Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, I think Rankin's kind of coming into his own, and he's he's turning out to be a good number two. But dynamic duo just yet? Uh, I, I don't think so. Obviously, this guy played for the Cowboys prior. Uh, they signed him to a, a three-year contract in the offseason. I, I think he's playing fairly well uh, for the New York Giants, but... At this point, I, I wouldn't call them uh, a dynamic duo. So maybe now that I'm looking around the league for people that actually have that kind of depth, uh, I, I see a little bit of a you know potential for Seattle to really say maybe that's what's making them good. I mean, Perryman and Gabe Williamson in uh, in Tennessee, that's another tough uh, tough uh, dynamic duo at wide receiver. Definitely, the Jets on paper look good uh, with with Kaysen and Weber. Just haven't seen the the health. The health is such a big thing at wide receiver. Lip and. That's something, as, as they're saying right now, that Mason is actually hurt right now, which is, it goes back to the thing. If the guy can stay healthy, he's 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns, put in the bank, you know. Uh, but health is just, uh, <laughs> Chino's saying right now, man, y'all let Bomber run this podcast. Big <laughs> shout out to Chino for some of the graphics that he does. You can check him out on Twitter as well. Uh, definitely a friend of the program. All right, we're going to move on from the Seahawks. I ain't got nothing left. Contender or pretender? I'm going to say they're 500, so they're definitely a pretender for me. But I'm not going to say – let's not say contender or pretender. I'm going to say spoiler. I think they finished somewhere 9-7, and 8-8, 7-9. Eight and eight, seven and nine, But I think they win one more key game, and maybe against the Rams, and it kind of changes the outcome of some of this playoff uh, picture we got going on. Yeah, uh, that's where I would put them. Like I said, they're 4-4. Four and four. They have a chance. They're not out of it, but – the Rams are going to be tough to, to unseat them for the division. So, But they play them next week, and then that bye, things can get turned around for the Seahawks. All right, moving on. We're going to talk about EA Access, the NBL tournament coming up. Are you guys ready? August 17th through the 21st, you can, first, you can sign up on 365.maddenbomberleague.com. Man, it's going to be a big tournament, a five-day tournament. Win six games, and you win the main prize, which is an Antonio Brown signed jersey plus... And a free copy of the GOAT edition of Madden, which will be available for play on the 22nd of August. Lip, have you signed up yet for this tournament? I have, and I'm, I'm, I'm unlike everybody else, apparently. I'm excited for this Antonio Brown jersey. Everybody else wants it and, and, and wants to do some evil things with it, but, man, that is, that is a cool prize. Really grabs a lot of people with attention, love or hate, and it's going to be awesome to see all of these guys. 64 people fighting for this thing. Yeah, we have over about 70, 70, 72 apps right now, applications. Uh, you'll receive an email when you are accepted. Uh, you'll have you'll be required to respond back. You respond back, then you'll be added to the GroupMe chat for our NBL Network Madden 18 EA Access Tournament. And that's when you're in like Flynn. There'll be about 10 prizes given out, 10 to 12 prizes. 
Uh, we'll, we'll be announcing those prizes as we get closer. Somewhere towards the next couple weeks, towards the end of this month, towards the end of July, we'll be announcing uh, the prizes that we'll be giving out. Probably about five winners, four to five actual winning prizes, and the rest will be uh, drawings for the people that actually were in the tournament. This is our annual tournament. This is the first time we're running it, but it will be an annual tournament. We'll have it every year Madden releases. So it's a pretty big deal. You'll be a part of history, a part of the first... Uh, uh, our, our first EA Access tournament lip. So it, it's a big deal. I'm really excited about it. Guys, make sure you register. Go to 365.maddenbomberleague.com and then you go to, I believe, the Join tab and, and it'll say EA Access Registration, something like that. It's really easy to figure out. Uh, make sure you go and check that out. But Lip, the time has come. It's time oh. for our three and out game show. Favorite new addition to the Commissioner Corner podcast. This is going to be episode two. It's actually going to be a six- part episode uh six episodes for one season five episodes we'll have five guys come on the show the top two of those five make it to our final show which will be our sixth show and during that six six show they will battle against each other to be the winner of the of the first season and the winner of that of those two that that battle each other they get to go into the boss mode and play lip and if they defeat lip in a head-to-head -head on that same show the sixth episode of the three and out game show then they make it into the Commissioner Corner Podcast Hall of Champions, and they are forever remembered, and their legacy is forever remembered. And it's time for the game show. I'm excited. I'm, I've been waiting for this all week. I'm ready to have this guy on because I I think he needs to know a lot of this stuff. So I'm ready. And the and the participant in episode two is going to be OSU, the owner of the Carolina Panthers, Nick Mazesco, the NBL Network Director. And do we got the music playing right now, Jack? We should have different music playing right now. All right. I guess we don't have the the music. I, it will be coming on though when we start. Correct. I was I was expecting like pyrotechnics, like a big theme song. I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a game show. All right, Delvar, put the rules uh, on the page right now. Let's show the I rules am for the three and out. Real American. All right. So the three and out uh, rules music. are. <laughs> What's that? Uh, De Deca wants some Jeopardy music. He wants to Jeopardy, take an old man come on, nap. Come on. That's like the oldest game show there is. You should have so chose something <laughs> more hip. Maybe some Family Feud stuff. All right. Uh, the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, October, just messaged me. Actually, it was Sims was the quarterback. Ah, I, I yes. think it's the first name. He didn't tell me the first name, but that is actually correct for those uh, Madden head, NBL heads out there that were interested in knowing the answer to that. All right. Let me get. Let me pull up the rules real quick. So the rules wait, should be wait, on the page. Rules? They should be on the page right now. Here's the rules you got right now. We went over them before the show. All right. And the rules are, as it states up there, you will be given. Let me pull them up. I'm having a hard time pulling mine up right now and reading them. We should have been we should have been better prepared for this. This is where it all falls apart, folks. This is where it all falls apart. I Here's want an automatic buy. I win. All right. You will be given a question with three multiple choice answers. Your answers must be given within five seconds from the completion of the question being asked. OSU, if you don't know the answer, you can use three lifelines for help. You got a 50-50, which we will eliminate one of the multiple choice answers uh, from, the, from the list of answers. You can also ask the chat, ask the live streaming chat on the network for, for the answer to the question. And, or you can ask, and this this is what was asked last time with, with Chunky. Uh, he asked Delvar, which is the, the producer <laughs> of this show. Wow. Uh, you asked the NBL executive producer for his thoughts. And an additional 10 seconds is given to the per participant after one of these lifelines is used. You can use multiple lifelines on one answer. Any wrong answer is considered an out. You get three outs, and then you are eliminated from the show. And the question number that you last answered correctly is your score. Delvar. Let's put up the leaderboard for the uh, Commissioner Corner Podcast Three and Out Game Show. We've had one person be on it. Is it up there already? Guaranteed right, already there. second place. So, so the worst you can do right That's now is second outlook. place. Yes. That's a good outlook. And I Positive think Chunky thinking. went kind of early. Uh, obviously, he got seven points. But that was that was how many answered correctly. Uh, but here, here, here we go. You get twenty questions is, is a max score. That would be a perfect score where you answered all twenty questions without striking out. And if you do that, man, you're just you're just the man. No more. But than are me. you ready? OSU, are you ready? Do we got the music playing now, Delvar? All right, he says the music's playing, so we're good to go. I don't think OSU, ready. are you ready? Lip's gonna take uh Lip's gonna obviously be counting down the time, and if you go over on the time, he's gonna let me know, and it'll be automatic strike against you. OSU, show him the X that's gonna go on the screen when there's an incorrect answer. 
Ah, there weren't gonna be any X's up there. Calm down. All right, so the X, the X that you just cool. saw that came up there on the, on our show, that's gonna show up when you answer a question incorrectly. So once you see three of those, your day is over, and we shake hands and we tell you, time to move on. How, how do right. I shake your hand? Can I ask that oh, question? It's a virtual shake. Okay, gotcha. I'll ask you all these questions. You're gonna get a strike just for questioning me. Look, I'm just trying to figure out how this game works, guys. I sort of thought I'd get like a <laughs> ten point head start. <laughs> Yeah, hey, you're the network director. There's a lot of all right, guys. So right now, there's a lot of, you know, pressure. We, there's we feel pressure like... <laughs> on you, OSU. Massive you, amount. You got to get higher than seven. All right, look, look, listen, listen, chat. I want you guys in, in the chat to guess how many you think he's gonna get right. Chunky got seven right. He's currently on our leaderboard uh, because there's nobody else actually challenging him right now. Uh, where do y'all think he'll end up, uh, OSU? And we'll get a couple questions there. And OSU gives himself one. Delvar giving himself five. Thanks, Delvar. And uh, Decca says, pick him. Uh, ask the chat. Ask him. He thinks no. Uh, Z Star says eight. Chunky says fifteen. Wow, Chunky, my best friend. You are way overestimating my knowledge base. All right, guys, we're gonna start the we're gonna start the game show now. Are you ready? I don't think they're ready for this jelly. All right, here we go. OSU, the NBL Network Director Nick Mazesco, current owner of the Carolina Panthers. Here we go. What teams most recently played on NBL Live? Vikings and Lions, Steelers and Bengals, or Jaguars and Titans? Oh, most recently, that would be the Vikings and the Lions. That is correct. I Question got number one. two. Who was the NBL member of the month for July? N-Train, Delvar, Gub. Uh, for July, I'm gonna go with N-Train. N-Train, that is correct. Question number three. Who won the AFC East in season 24? Delvar, Unisolated, or Justin? Oh, see, I'd like to go Delvar, but I know that one was Unisolated. Hey, man, we don't need you to get cute. That is correct. Question number three. Three points for him. Let mark it down. Question number four. How many Super Bowls does Peyton Manning have in real life? Three, one, or two? Uh, in real life, Peyton Manning has two. That is correct. Question number five. What was the NBL game of the year for season 23? Lions versus Redskins, Bengals versus Ravens, or Raiders versus Chiefs? Season 23. First year we gave out the game of the year, it was the Bengals and Ravens. That is incorrect. Put the X on the screen. Oh. It was. A, I like how you're answering in complete sentences, but that one you were absolutely wrong on. Yeah. The, the correct answer was Raiders versus Chiefs. Delbar, did we get the X sure, up? Sure, sure. That's a good we got one. the X up, so that's going to be one strike. So your current score lip is? Four. Four. All right. But, OSU, you said the first year uh, that we gave out the award was Bengals-Ravens. That was true, but that was season 20 22. Wow. Yeah. Ah, Look, so I've been there, here for a while. He was on hey. track, but not in the butter. Do like we, butter. we don't give any, any half credits for anything, so. Can I get some butter? We will give out butter. <laughs> Hey, who was the all-time NBL leader for rushing touchdowns in a season? Jeremy Hill, Le'Leon Austin, or Markel Ryan? Rushing touchdowns? Uh, Markel Ryan. And that is correct. Well, did he get that off in enough time? Just in enough time. Woo! Just in enough time. That's Justin, correct. You got a five-point score. The correct answer was Markel Ryan with how many touchdowns, Lip? 24. 24 touchdowns from Madden. 15. 15. Wow, long time ago in the NBL. Question number seven. Who was the NBL Season 7 MVP? Matt Stafford, Trent Redman, or Mike Glennon? Oh, uh, I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to go with the only name I recognize, Mike Glennon. That is correct. Question yes! seven is correct. That gives him five <laughs> points. That went six points on the day. All right, here goes uh, question number eight. This is a tricky question. And his current score is six. Six. When was the first NBL tonight? 6 12, 2016, 4 22, 2016, or 2 17, 2016? Uh, I, I think I'm going to go to Lifeline. I'm going to use my 50 50. All right, 50 Which with three 50. answers confuses me. All right, 50 50 <laughs> has been, and the, what has been removed is, is February 17th, 2016. Uh, the remaining answers are when was the first NBL tonight? 6-12-2016 or April 22nd, 2016? I'm going to go with April 22nd. That is correct. 
Yo! 50, 50 comes through. And he has used one of his lifelines, guys. He has two remaining. Ask the chat along with. Dun, dun, along, dun. With, along with Ask Delvar. I don't know how useful that is use that. a lifeline. Pass. Maybe we'll change, the, we'll change it to two lifelines and maybe a. I don't know. What's the opposite of a lifeline? Death sink. wish? I don't know. Sink. Sink yourself. You might sink yourself with that. Question number nine. Who is the only two time winner of the NBL Owner of the Year Award? Lip, Day Moon, or TFA? Uh, I'm going to go with J Moon. Was that, did he get it off in enough time, Lip? Yes, he did. Hey, that is correct, J Moon. Answer number nine, correct. So only one strike against you. You've used one lifeline. Question number 10. Who was the player of the game for NBL Live broadcast number 95? Matt Stafford, Keith Marshall, or Marcus Mariota? Oh, Brock is number 95. I, I, I'm going to have to... I'm going to use that Ask Delvar. I, I don't know if this is going to help, but I'll ask him. Ask Delvar. Delvar, who was the player of the game for NBA Live broadcast number 95? Matt Stafford, Keith Marshall, or Marcus Mariota? He says Keith Marshall. So I'm going to go with Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota is correct. Nailed Question it. number 10 is correct. <laughs> you have <laughs> one lifeline left. The Ask Delvar worked. <laughs> The ass Delvar worked. He knew it wasn't Matt Stafford. It was basically a 50-50. It, it was a reverse 50-50. Question number 11. You have a current score of 9 with one strike. You've used two lifelines. What is the max limit for quarterback yards per completion? 15, 12, or 20? Uh, I'm going to ask the chat on this one. He's going to ask the chat what it is. You get 10 seconds starting now. But what is the max limit for quarterback yards per completion? 12, 15, or 20? Blip, count down to 10 seconds. As we wait. I'm, I, as we wait. As we got we 20. Wait. We got to go, go 20. I, I, look, I Eight, don't know this one. Nine, 20. 10. The 20, that's your final answer. Number 20 is 20 yards per completion is correct. I never get near that anyways. That's why I don't know it. All right. You have zero lifelines left. <laughs> you have one strike. You're on question number 12. You're doing pretty good. Thanks. You got yeah. 10 points already. You've already beat, su superseded what Chunky has done. But let's see what we can do. When playing the computer in NBL, the opposing quarterback may not have thrown more than how many interceptions? Five, three, or four? I'm going to go with four. That is correct. Question 12. Moving along. Question 13. You have a total score of 11. Who was the first ever NBA Live player of the game? Matt Stafford, Andrew Luck, or Ryan Nassib? I uh, got four, uh, got, five. Got yep, nothing. That's it. That's going to be a strike. Did Number two. The correct answer was Ryan Nassib. Two ah, strikes. Course. Score of, what is it, 11? What does he got a score of? Uh, 10. Are you sure it's 10? I what hope question so. Are we, what question are we on? No, we're on question number 14. Then I is, gotta, he got a score I... of 11. It is score 11. Score of 11, question Lip 14. trying to cheat he's, me he's out. Got two I'm just checking you. <laughs> he do I get a, the, the guy do I get a question right answers. for that I got, I got multiple pages here, man. I, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, you got a, you got a score of 11. We're on question number 14. Are you ready, OSU? I am. You got five seconds. Don't let the timer go off. You know, you get on. You got to. You got to answer quick. You got to answer quick. How many Wildcat plays maybe ran in one NBL game? Two, four, or three? Two. That is correct. Two Wildcat plays can be ran during an NBL live game. That gives you a score of twelve. Moving on to question number fifteen. Who was the NBL co-commission before Lip? BK, Frost, or Big P? I'm going to go with Frost. That is going to end. I know. I didn't. Hey, I was going to go to the and hold it up there. That was, a, that was a good answer, but at the same time, a forgetful answer on my part. I uh, wish we didn't have to bring that name up, but here we are. The correct answer was Big P, surprisingly. Who, was who? the uh, uh, Who's Big P? <laughs> That's, it gets a little Big difficult. As, as you see the flashing red X, keep it flashing, Delvar. Oh. Uh, and that's going to do it. So your total score was 12. You're going to be in the first place. If you're in the Correct. top two OSU, you actually are get to make it back to our final round, which is going to be episode six of the three and out game show. And you face off against the guy, the other competitor who finished in the top two as well. The winner will 
then go on to be crowned the champion for that season. After we do about five seasons, we'll have a we'll have a championship season where all you guys will come back and do a do a season of champions. Uh, but as of right now, you'll be in the, you'll be a champion and you'll go to the boss level to fight Lip and it, to play Lip. And if you beat Lip, you make it to the the Commissioner Corner Podcast Wall of Champions. And twelve is a good score, nothing to be ashamed of. These are definitely hard questions uh, to have. Um, you know, really interesting stuff, man. The next couple questions, I'm looking at them right now. They'd be tough. But thanks for coming on. I mean, how'd you enjoy the experience? Was it fun? Uh, it was absolute blast. I just always knew that my demise would be a big P. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the jokes. Uh, do we have the drum sound? The jokes are, the jokes are going off. And that's going to do it for episode number 20, Commissioner's Corner Podcast. So what we covered today, we covered a lot of things. We talked about the EA Access. We talked about... Alan James, we talk about Dion Neblet, we talked about the Seahawks. Big shout out to our sponsor, Web3Cast.com. TGN Army. Sponsor. And, uh, you know, give another shout out to our partner. TGN Army, the Games Network. Appreciate all that they do. New partnership, we're looking forward to uh, growing with these guys. And definitely, NBA Live, gonna be, we're going to be right back here streaming live. NBA Live Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You got the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. We talked a lot about the Jaguars today. It's going to be a really exciting game. You're going to have OSU and Bomber on the call. Man, I'm really excited for it. It's going to be a it's going to be a great game. That's going to be Week Nine in NBL Season 25. So make sure you check this out. That's Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And guys, we'll have this podcast up on the channel in the next 30 minutes. And you guys enjoy uh, the upcoming weekend. And we'll see you Sunday. <laughs>